so in this tutorial we are going to talk about I'm going to introduce you to the methods and constructors in Java so methods and constructors they both are the functions so let's just discuss about the methods first so methods are basically functions so I can write here methods or functions so a function is used to perform some operations based upon some input and then it gives some output so if you will give some input to a function it is more likely to give you an output like this so we are going to create function in uh, Java and uh, the you have, we have seen in the previous tutorial we have seen an example of a class student we have created a class student and in this tutorial we are going to create a function in this class and the function can have some return type which is just the data type of the output so it is just the data type of the output so a function can have some return type and a name and it can also have some input values so we are going to create a function void display in this tutorial so a function is defined in this manner so this one is the return type of the function and since it, the display function is not going to return anything then I'm just marking it as void but in some cases there will be functions which will be which will return some values like some integer value or some character value so we are going to change this according to that in the display function you can see these two circular braces inside these braces you can optionally write some input parameters like you can write int x comma y like this so you can write some input values in this parenthesis and this is the block of statements of the display function block of statements so let's uh, go to our eclipse ide and uh, implement this function void display so in uh, in the eclipse ide we will create a function void display and we will uh, act, we will use the object of this class we will use the object of class student and we will display the details of this particular student using this by calling this function so let's move on to the eclipse ide so this is the program which we have written previously so now what i'm just going to do is i'm going to create a function in this class student so i'm going to comment here creating method and the name of the method is void display so the return type is void and there are no pa parameters inside this uh, function display so this this is not a parameterized function so now what I'm just going to do is I will just display the details of the student so I will first display the role number and similarly I will display the rest of the details like age gender so age gender and finally marks 
So this is the function which I, or the method I've created in the class student. And we have already assigned some values to student one and student two. You can see the values that we have already uh, assigned to these objects. So in order to call a function, in order to call this void function, we will have to use a, uh, an object of this class. So here we have created two objects, student one and student two. So if you want to display the, re uh, the all the values or, or all the members of this student two object, then you will have to use this object to call this function display. So here is how you can do that. So now I'm going to write here display values of student A or student 1. So I will use the object student 1 and then I will use a dot operator and then I will call the display function and since display function does not have any parameters I will leave this parenthesis as empty. So this is how you're going to call the function display. So if you will call it using student one, then it will automatically display the values assigned to uh, the student one object. So let's run this program and see the output of this program. So you can see here that the row number is 25, then marks, 95 then 16 and male so uh, it has displayed the values or the members uh, of the student one object similarly you can also uh, call this display function for the student two and this is how we create methods in this in our class so let's create one more function but this time it is a parameterized function and it is used to calculate the sum of roll number and marks. So although this is a useless function, I'm just going to, I'm writing it because I want to display you some, uh, I want to display how parameterized functions work. So this is a parameterized function. So we will have to use a different name here, like R N O. And here also we'll have to write some different variables like M R K. So what I'm just going to do here is I will create another variable int sum and I will assign it the value of RNO plus MRK like this. And this function will return the sum of the of these two variables. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to call the student to sorry the display function using the student to and this time we are going to call the calculate function so calculate function is called and remember that uh, you cannot leave the parenthesis like this because it is returning a uh, some value and it has two inputs so you will have to give two inputs to it so let me give the roll number as 12 comma marks will be like 75 or 70 yeah 75 so I've given two values to this function calculate which will uh, just give the sum of roll number and marks and it will store it in this sum variable and it will return the sum variable so if it is returning the sum variable, I will have to store it at, in some other variable. So 
let me just store this in some temporary variable and in the next line I am just going to display the temporary variable like this so let's run this program and see whether it is calculating or not so you can see here that it has calculated the sum of uh, 12 plus 75 which is 87 so this is how our parameterized functions work so let's suppose I want to uh, I want to give it the roll number and marks assigned to the student to variable so let's see how we can achieve that thing so now I'm going to create a function which is used to update the details of student 1 or of any student so it will be a void update function update details function like this and uh, I will give the newer values to this update function so we will use the student one dot update details and let's provide some values newer values so let's suppose the roll number will be 36 marks will be 50 gender is since student 1 has gender as male you can see here let's alter it to female and finally let's write the age of this student as 15 so these are newer values that we are going to so we are going to update our student function sorry the uh, we are going to update the members of the student one object so we are passing it to this function update details in the update details function we will create variables roll number and we are going to use the same variables as we have used here so I'm just going to paste all of them here and instead of semicolon I will use a comma so here I have created a function update details which is used to update uh, the details of the student object that is calling this function and we are using the same variables as we have defined here and when you are using the same variables we will use this keyword and this keyword is used to access the uh, object that has called this method so this keyword is used to access the object that invoked this method so we know that this method is invoked by the uh, object student1 so we will use this dot roll num to assign it with some other value which is given at the time of function call so roll number is 36 then we are going to uh, write this dot h equals h and similarly I will write the gender and also the marks of the student so here we have used uh, this keyword which is used to access the object object that invoked this particular method 
and it is useful because uh, we may have more than one object so in order to initialize or to update the details of a particular student we are going to use this operator which will access the student1 object because student1 object has called this function void void update details which you can see here so this is actually function call so we have uh, called the function update details using the student1 object so in this manner we can create functions that can return some values they can be used to update the details of a particular object so this is how methods are created in Java. So now let's move on to the constructors part. So constructors are used to construct an object. So as you can see here in this part, we are assigning the values to the student1 and the student2 object. So let's suppose the programmer forgets to assign the values to a particular object. So let's create another object which is student3 this time and now we have uh, this the programmer forgot to assign some values the role number marks age and gender to this particular object so this will make uh, our program a little bit buggy because whenever we will we will try to access the role number marks age or gender of this object it is going to give us the null values which is going to uh, crash our program because we have not assigned any values to the student 1 and student 2 so in that case you can leave the assigning so these are an, this is an important point so I will write it here so in case of constructors so you can leave you can leave the initialization the initialization of an object at the time of its creation at the time of its creation so basically uh, a constructor is a function that has same name as of the class as of class so this is the first point in constructors the second point is that a constructor is called or I should say a constructor is automatically called when its object is created So what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to create an, a method here and it is not a simple method but it is known as constructor because it has the same name as that of our class. So the name of the class was student and I'm going to create a constructor and I'm not going to pass any parameters to it so a constructor is called automatically at the time of object creation so this basically means that whenever you will write this line this line it will invoke the constructor the student constructor since there are no parameters in this parenthesis 
it is going to invoke the student constructor that has no parameters in it. So you can also give some parameters to this uh, function which will make it more easier than assigning it like this. So let's suppose the programmer forgets to write some or to initialize some values to the student. So what we're just going to do is it will this uh, object creation will automatically call this constructor student and it will initialize the members or the variables to some default value like this. So gender is made. So these are the default values that will be assigned to our student three uh, object. So even if the programmer forgets to assign some values to it, it will automatically call this student function and it will assign the values to this object. You can use this operator to uh, automatically so that you can uh, reference it to the to this place. So this constructor will be called whenever a particular object is created. So this is the main use of constructors. You can also initialize it with some values. So you can write some integer values here and here also. So it will match with the same number of parameters. So it will find a constructor with same number of parameters and then it will execute that particular constructor. So that's the main use of constructors in Java. So it's uh, very useful to create a constructor in case when uh, you want to write some default values to a particular object. So let's now display, let's now try to display the details of the student object. So you can see that I have not assigned any values to this student three object. You can see here, I have not accessed any values, but since it will invoke the student constructor, it will automatically assign role number, marks, age, and gender to this student three object. And when I will call the display function, it will automatically display all of these details. So let's see. So you can see here that it has just 100, 100, male and 100. So this is basically how you create constructors or you can even create parameterized constructors. So you can actually pass values here as we have done in this case. So it basically works like a function. The difference is that it has the same name as that of the class. You can see here the class name was also the student. So this is how you will create constructors and methods in Java. Next thing that we're going to study is a concept known as the garbage collection. Garbage collection. So let's suppose you have created a particular object or you have instantiated an object. So let's focus on this line on this one. So in this line or in this line, we have created an object student two, and we have used a new operator. And you can see that when you're using the new operator, it is allocating the object in the memory. So what will happen if our whole program will stop its execution? Then ideally this new operator, since it is it has allocated student one in the memory, it is not going to release it until and unless we use some delete operator as we were using in the C++. But in case of Java, Java will automatically destroy. So that is known as the garbage collection. It is collecting the garbage. 
so it will so java automatically deallocates automatically deallocates an object allocated in the memory allocated in memory after program execution so you do not need to use any code or anything java does it for you automatically which is known as the garbage collection so what if a programmer wants to let what if let's say a programmer wants to run some code before java automatically deallocates that object so you can use a finalized keyword so i'm going to use the keyword So this is basically a finalized function, which is basically protected and void. And it is an L-built function. It is not a user-defined function. So you can write this function protected void finalize. So whenever you, whenever Java will automatically try to deallocate an object so before deallocating it will run this function run this method before deallocating object so this is how java we can use the finalize function which is an inbuilt function we have seen the garbage collection we have seen the constructors and functions in the next tutorial we are going to see the we are going to take a closer look at the methods and constructors we will cover some of the most important topics like we will see uh, overloading or overloaded methods then overloaded constructors we will also see the final keyword the use of the final keyword the use of the static keyword and uh, the use of the access specifiers like public protected and private so thanks for watching